did they, anyone in the hospital or any other people outside inquire about diet or anything? Was that mentioned at all? No, I, I remember when I was in the hospital, I think, um, I think it was my aunt that was there, um, was visiting me. And I remember she asked the uh, doctor and said, is there anything you can do for, like, should he be on a special diet? Should he be eating this way or this way? And so my aunt's like a very health conscious person. And the doctor told them, uh, our doctor told her, he's like, no, uh, there's no evidence to suggest that um, that diet is going to have any impact on you at all. Uh, so I just eat, just pretty much keep eating what you're eating because diet has no impact. That's literally what we were told. Okay. Interesting. All right. So, uh, so you're obviously not in that situation now. So how do you, how do you get out of this sort of really bad place? Well, I, I had seen a couple more, uh, specialists and they kind of said the same thing where they were just kind of like, Oh, your insulin's a bit high or your cholesterol's high. I, uh, you might have to go on insulin in the future. It takes some statins. That's pretty much all you can do. It's bad genetics, bad luck. And I kind of continued that way for the next couple of years until, until 2020. Um, so I, I was in a really, really bad place again, because, you know, with like lockdowns and everything and I, my uh, ex-wife moved back to move back to, to Norway when her visa ran out. So I was back with my parents and they're seniors. So I was very worried about getting them sick and with all the hysteria and everything that was going on. And it wasn't until one of my friends, he's actually um, uh, my buddy from jujitsu. He's actually a foot and ankle surgeon, but he's a carnivore. Mm. And he had been eating, uh, you know, kind of a ketogenic carnivore diet for the past 10 years or so. And he had, I mean, I think he's, he's about a year younger than you. He looks 15 years younger. He's like really muscular than Jack's. And he invited me over to just have a steak with him. And I ended up going over and I didn't eat anything that day, which is pretty rare for me. And he had basically like a 32 ounce grass fed ribeye steak. That was blue rare. It's something I never really, I never really ate a lot of steak and I never really ate uh, blue rare steak. And I ended up eating it. And after I was like surprising, I'm like, I actually feel pretty satiated. I feel like I still kind of want carbs, but I feel like I could go home and not eat again. And I ended up not eating the rest of the day. And I went, I ended up uh, waking up in the morning and I'm like, wow, I actually feel really satiated still. I actually feel, um, it's like, I, I actually feel pretty good today. So I'm like, I, I'm just, maybe I'm just going to continue on. I'm going to do some research and kind of continue on with this way of eating. And it's going back to the way, like in terms of me taking nutrition and everything, it's kind of surprising I didn't do this before since I know like I was taking ancestral nutrition or uh, anthropology courses in university. A lot of them had to do with ancestral nutrition. Like I took a course on the Inuits and some uh, like I read lots of Gerald, uh, Jared Diamonds. And I got to this place from like, I think grains aren't healthy for humans and we should be eating mostly meat. But at the same time, I was looking at that wonderful epi epidemiological research that this isn't control for any of the confounding variables. So I would, I would look into that, uh, look into that and I'd say, oh, well, this is, this is what I'm going to follow now. And I think maybe just subconsciously it was easier to do it that way. But anyways, after the first week of eating this way, I had probably lost about 10 pounds. I mean, most of it water weight. And I'm like, wow, I'm really losing weight. This is awesome. And I wasn't feeling great. I wasn't feeling bad either. I was just feeling okay. So um, and within the next two weeks, all of a sudden, my depression and my anxiety had completely vanished. My ankylosing spondylitis had got 90% better. All the numbness in my hands was gone. Um, my bruising started going away. Um, like all my, my asthma went away. My heartburn went away. My digestive issues went away. Pretty much everything you can think of, like my libido came back. Pretty much everything you can think of went away within two or three weeks. So I knew after that point, that's pretty much, I was pretty much just like, this is what I need to do from now on. I can't go back to eating the other way. And, and and that was so 2020. So we're two. It's almost 2023. So almost three years later, I guess, depending on when you started. Yeah, it was about. Uh, I think it was the start of uh, October 2020. So it's been a little over two years. A little over two years. Okay. And yeah. so uh, you know, you mentioned satiety and that first big stake you had. Is that something you found? This because you said this. You said this lifelong issue with not being able to get full. Um, is is that something you found? Yeah. No. It's. It's, uh, I can eat satiety a lot easier now and, uh, I can go without binging on food. I mean, I, I usually eat one meal a day for the most part, uh, during the weekdays and that's all I really need. I can, I, I, I mean, I'll do, sometimes I'll do two day fast, three day fast every once in a while. And I really, it's really easy for me to do. It's pretty amazing where 
all I can think about all day is food. But now it's like, if I don't have food for a day, it's I'm completely fine. I'm not worried about it. I'm not getting stressed about it. I know I'll feel fine. I know I'll feel good. Uh, ankylosing spinal eye. So were you taking the anti-inflammatory drugs throughout the whole time because you, you had this excruciating back pain? Um, I did on and off. I didn't take them all the time. Um, I took them initially at the start and I did, I noticed a bit of improvement, but not a lot. So I kind of, uh, I just, over time, I'm like, I just don't want to take these. I just don't think it's going to be good for me in the long term. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I stopped, uh, stopped taking them. Were you, were you on any other medications besides that? Or uh, yeah, I, I just take, I just take, uh, or I was taking methylphenidate from ADHD as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, that's the only thing I was taking. Okay. Are you still, are you still needing to take that or is that, is that something you've eliminated as well? Well, actually when I started uh, changing my diets, um, my, my need for it went dramatic, went down dramatically. I mean, I could think a lot more clearly, uh, like my OCD improved as well. Um, yeah. So I ended up going from probably like 30, 40 milligrams a day to maybe five or 10 milligrams. So today I don't take it every day, but uh, on certain days I will take it. I might just take 10 milligrams now though. So it's a very small dose. It's basically a child's dose. Uh, so you said you were unable to find work, I guess this is back in maybe Sweden or something. Oh, and, Sweden. Yeah. And, and so are you back to, to doing a job and uh, that type of stuff? Yeah. I mean, I'm a, I'm a teacher by trade. I have a teaching degree that I'm not using right now. I'm actually uh, managing a warehouse. Um, and it's actually, it's great because I have all this energy now to do things I couldn't before. And even like uh, athletically and everything, I'm, I, I basically find it impossible to get tired nowadays. I, I used to go for, try to do like a 5k run and I would be almost throwing up after it'd be hard to breathe. Uh, I would feel exhausted for the rest of the day. And now I, I pretty much went off the couch after not doing any exercise for months. And I was able to run a 10k for the first time in my life without even getting tired or breathing heavy or anything like that. So I'm able to do those kind of things now. I'm able to go back to jiu-jitsu now as well because I have that actual energy to do it. Yeah, you mentioned you were with your parents. Are you, do you still uh, spend much time with your parents? Have they noticed, it? Have they noticed any change in you? Yeah, no. I, I, my parents and pretty much everyone around me has noticed a huge, huge positive change in me, which has uh, been, been really nice. I mean, before I used to, you know, I used to just kind of be uh, an overly empathetic crybaby a lot of the times. And now it's, I just feel a lot, uh, my whole outlook on life is a lot different. I'm a lot more motivated, a lot more friendly, outgoing, happy. Um, yeah. So pretty much everything for me has changed. Yeah. It's interesting that, you know, uh, you know, obviously when you're sick and you don't feel good, it's, it's harder to be optimistic and, and pleasant. I mean, you can see a lot of people that are in the world suffering and, uh, you know, they just don't interact with other people as well. 